Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. You know this man already, I hope, because he just won the NPC Nationals overall. He is now in the company of legends like Lee Haney, Sean Ray, Kevin Levroni, Victor Martinez, Cedric McMillan. This is Matthew Schmidt out of Texas. How are you, sir? Outstanding. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing this on uh, Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, hope, hope I'm not interrupting any meals or anything. Uh, let's get uh, let's get rolling. Um, I, I know very little about you except uh, what we know about your competitive history and the colitis and all that, which we'll get into. But I want to know first of all, where are you from? What were you what were you like as a kid? What kind of activities, sports, or hobbies were you were you interested in growing up? Uh, I'm from Michigan, currently in Texas. I used to play uh, baseball, uh, football. Uh, in college, I have a double major in criminal justice sociology. In college, I played baseball and rugby. Um, from there, I graduated. I worked at a uh, adolescent psychiatric hospital for a few years. Hmm. Uh, then I got hired in 2011. I got hired in with uh, Department of Homeland Security. Worked down at the border for a little under five years. Um, that's, it's a difficult lifestyle if you're not from the border, but it was a great experience. Let me ask you, what was that? You know, because all I, I see, there's some TV shows about it and movies, but yeah. were you like on the, were you like, you know, in the, in the all-terrain vehicles running around the desert? What was, what was your responsibility? No, you know, in the news portrays, they get confused a lot. Well, they'll say U.S. Uh, CBP, Customs and Border Patrol. That's inaccurate. It's Customs and Border Protection. There's Border Patrol, which has green uniforms. They're out in the brush following trails, uh, and then there's CBP, which was me, uh, U.S. Customs Board Protection, and we're stationed either at the, the port of entry or at uh, airports, and I happen to be at the port of entry okay. dealing with uh, uh, inbound traffic, so, okay. yeah. I was I, I thought that was all the same job, honestly. <laughs> yeah, not, not many people are too familiar with the differences, but yeah. all the, the same mission, so. So how young were you when you started lifting weights? What made you start lifting weights in the first place? <laughs> Um, so it was probably, I was always one of the smaller guys, you know, in stature at least. Yeah. Um, so I think it's pretty typical as a male, you want to somehow try to kind of compensate for the, the lack of height. And, uh, I was always pretty athletic. And, uh, when I got into high school, I was a freshman. I idolized the, uh, the bigger guys in, in the, in the weight room. Cause I saw it always seemed to be associated with more respect and more um, privileges and more, you know, it just, and I appreciated the work ethic that they put into it. So I always um, watched those guys and kind of tried to emulate what they were doing in the gym. And, and once me and my, my friends and, and teammates started getting into weights, uh, I did notice that I start, we, we would have the same routine, but I would develop quicker than them. I would get stronger. I would grow a little faster. Um, so I, that's when I kind of learned that I had a little better genetics than the average person. And from there, it just, I'd look, you know, look through magazines and I got my first weight bench when I was 12 years old and I'd do whatever I could in the basement. And, uh, yeah, I was just addicting from a very young age. So were you, uh, you know, right before we started recording, you told me you have a very strong powerlifting background. Was that your first was that your first love or was bodybuilding your first love? Um, prior to competing, I would have to say the bodybuilding mentality because I was always more about the aesthetics of the body rather than strength. I think because strength always came naturally to me. I was always pretty strong. Um, so I never trained for strength. Um, I would, would more or less, if there was something lacking on my body, even from a young age, I would just, I'd focus on that more than others. Um, whether I was doing the right thing or not, I don't know, but that was my mentality. And, uh, my senior year, um, I, I was, uh, like 180 pounds and I was the strongest guy on the, on the football team. And my defensive, uh, coordinator, Coach O, he, uh, he wanted to take me to States in powerlifting. I ended up placing fifth in the state when I was 18. That was my first meet. And that was, I, I didn't even know what a bench shirt was. So I did it without a bench shirt and squat suit. Um, and then, uh, from there, the next time I competed was in college when I was 21. I did my first bodybuilding show and I won the, the light heavy class and, and, uh, I was, I just addicted from then. And, uh, 
went on to this most recent show is my 10th show. So yeah, that's not a lot um, of shows considering you, no. your first show was what year? 2006. And that's yeah. attributed to the, the health conditions in between that time frame. Right. Right. So, so powerlifting, you only did one meet when you were in high school. Uh, yep. Yeah. Wow. And then from there in my early twenties, um, I did several and, uh, every meet I at least broke a, an American record. Wow. And by the last, the last meet I did, I ended up placing fifth in the country wow. in the two twenties with a, a, a raw with a nineteen oh six total now, which has been blown away. Guys are just, you know, the two thousand pound club was the was a big deal. There's only a few guys in it, and that's what I was going for. And now it's it's a long list, and guys are freaks now. So, what yeah. were your what were your best lifts in the three lifts? Uh, seven thirty three squat, seven thirty three deadlift, and a four sixty two bench. Okay, yeah. So, I mean- yeah, because yeah. you know, looking at your physique, it's it's got that real dense, thick. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It's a very trained look. It's it's not. Sure. You know, some guys have more of a a puffier look, if you want to put it that way. Yep. There's just not a lot of separation, a lot of things to look at. But you can tell, especially your quads and your delts are just r- ridiculous. I mean, those are some of the best yeah. best delts I've seen in a long time. Uh, coming it's out of come a long coming, way. They weren't always like that. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, well, you know, I look back at pictures recently, actually, and it's amazing uh, when just how much they've grown, and, and you don't realize because you know, I you go by the the scale often, and and you kind of lose sight of how much a few pounds can visually, physically, you know, make it such a difference. Um, so I, I actually weigh. I don't weigh much more. I weighed like two thirty five in college. Right now, I'm. I'm back up to about 240, but the the quality is, and I was never even chubby, really. Um, it, it's it's just amazing what uh, you know, where you where you put that weight on, and, and the the quality of the, the the muscle you put on. You don't have to be 300 pounds to no. to look like you're, you know. So fortunately, because I don't want to <laughs> be that big, so 300 is a little ridiculous, but uh. Yeah. I'm curious, who was the first person? Did did you notice your potential, or did someone else point it out to you as far as bodybuilding? Because, you know, there's a lot of competitors out there, but there's very few that you can look at and say, that that guy right there, he's going somewhere. So what was the first time that you heard that or you knew that yourself? You know, that's, that's a good question. Um, it's kind of funny and embarrassing at the same time because um, I, oftentimes I'll reflect back to when I, I think it was 2015, when so in 2015 I was uh, close to close to what 29 years old ish, so you know several people become pros long before then and are in the and I've been in the game and in the sport for a long time and very interested in it, but I wasn't that versed in terms of so I did it it was a it was a regional qualifier going into it I didn't even know what a regional qualifier was a national qualifier nationals U.S. I didn't know anything what that was so. Anyway, I, I did the Battle on the Bay in Corpus Christi in 2015. I won the overall. Mm-hmm. That, and so people are coming to me. You qualified for, uh, for nationals. And USA's was in a couple weeks. So you're going to do USA's? And I felt like an idiot because I'm like, USA's? Like, don't like pros do that? Like, I didn't know anything about it. And then I got, you know, minutes later, I'm getting interviewed by somebody. And uh, he's asking, you know, so what's next? You're going to comp- we got USA's in a couple weeks. And. And I tried to play it off like, oh, you know, I got to think about it. And I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so at that point, that's when I, uh, you know, I had to do a little more research and talk to some more people and, and get a better better idea of, of where to go from there. And um, that was kind of my wake up call right there. Yeah. Are you, ne- you never called it the Miami Nationals, did you? No. no. OK, good. <laughs> no. No, that, that's a no, no. That's, that's like a little, that's what I, I recently heard that that was a no, no. <laughs> I've, I've heard yeah. people call it some, the USA nationals. I've heard that too. I'm like, Oh boy, now you're really confused. <laughs> uh, so, so if that was 2015, so you don't, you haven't really been, I want to say following the sport, like following, you know, top NPC shows, IPB. Yeah. I don't get into like a, a lot of the, I know a lot of the, the pros and stuff and, but I, I just don't, I'm so consumed in, in my, my life. I'm so busy, um, you know, getting into it and learning. I would, I would watch videos and, and watch the, um, the, the, the way that they would lift and the, the little technicalities and stuff like that. But in terms of 
everybody's you know story and you know i hear guys talking backstage and throwing this name that name and, and there's so such common names to them um it's hard for me to have a conversation with because i don't know a lot of um you know the people that they're referring to it's yeah that's fine but i mean i, I you know you you have a you have a good excuse because I, I saw in the other interview with uh that you did the other day you work 80 hours a week on average yeah wow yeah, yeah. How's yeah. that even possible? I mean, don't don't they put a cap on overtime or something? That sounds like. Well, no. I mean, if we if if we we just can't be understaffed, and we're a little a little short staffed right now, which I like because I you know everyone else has families and kids and stuff, and and I don't have that yet, so I take advantage of it. And uh, um, like I said in the other other interview, the the more busy I am, the the better I prioritize, the better I am, the more productive I am. And yeah. uh, I just love staying busy. So, and I love my job. So, so um, are you in the city, like downtown Houston? Where, where is your? No, no. no? Fortunately, I'm in a, uh, a nice suburb outside of Houston. Oh, okay. Population about well, maybe 40 some thousand. Oh. Um, amazing community. You know, what we see on TV uh, um, with the, uh, a lot of negativity towards law enforcement and stuff. This city's like the complete opposite. I can't go anywhere without somebody thanking me for my service and mm. and giving you know Starbucks gift cards and oh, nice. um, it's just uh, uh, I'm truly blessed to, to be in the city that I am. So it's it makes my job. Um, oh good, awesome. I'm, you know, it's, but are you, are you in a patrol or what do you do? You yeah. patrol uh, in a yeah. car? And, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine like Ronnie Coleman, you got your cooler with your meals all over the place. I got everything I need. Uh, yeah, right next to me. So eat it cold. If I have time to warm it up, great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all there, prepped, ready to go. So no, no excuses. So how did you end up going from uh, the border job, the federal government job, to uh, law, you know, local law enforcement? So I tried to put in for some transfers because. Um, I wanted the southern border experience because you, you can't get that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything just right there. The loads that they get just are incomparable to, you know, other inland states. Yeah. And uh, not many people want to go down there, mm -hmm. and understandably so. And uh, so then I just started applying to other. I had a buddy who lived in this city that I went to college with. And I visited him and his family a few times. And. Uh, it was a beautiful, quaint little city, just, you know, out of like a little movie, you know. Hmm. And uh, he had mentioned that they were hiring. He said, you know, I know you're not looking to become a police officer, but I know you're looking to get out of the city you're in. And so I, I put in and they moved pretty quick. And I was initially going to use it as a stepping stone to get back into the, the federal government. But I, I had no idea how much I would love uh, being a police officer and uh, um, also, you know, trying to give a, a good name to, uh, cause a lot of times, um, being the way that I look initially without talking to somebody, they may get a, uh, um, a different kind of vibe. Like that guy must be a, you know, a jerk or mean. And so I have to keep that into consideration whenever I have my encounters and I'm always very, very professional, very polite. And my encounters are 99.9% .9 of the time they go very well. And, and I get a lot of comments in terms about how, how nice I am to them and how I, I treat them like people and, and they are, you know, I'm, I'm no better than them. And, um, so, but of course they, I'm, I'm sure pretty much everybody you meet on the job comments on the physique. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, you can't hide it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really. And it's, uh, and I try not to be rude, but, uh, cause you know, a lot of times depending on the situation, um, sometimes it's a pretty informal conversation, but other times it's a little more serious and I don't like when they try to divert the, the, you know, the questions I'm asking to, so I have to kind of redirect the, the conversation and it's just, it does get old a little, oh, you have huge art. I know, I know, I know. your bench. I know. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I, I just tell, I don't work out. Yeah. So I just leave it did, at that. Did, did they all tell you they have a brother-in-law or something that's as big as you or bigger than I you? I know somebody who knows somebody who knows this guy. He looks just like you. Wait a little bit. What do you lift? 450? He lifts 460. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. All the time. That you never, that, that'll never go away. My favorite story. You remember Mike Francois? You remember who he was, right? Well, he still, mm -hmm. he still is, I'm saying. He, uh, uh -huh. he said people used to come up to him all the time, like little old ladies at the supermarket say, my son looks just like you. And he'd say, who's uh -huh. your son, Dorian Yates? <laughs> yeah, Mike right. Was a, Mike was a big dude. Uh -huh. Big dude. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what made you first? We're going way back again, but what made you first start competing? Did someone say there's a show coming up? You should do it. Were you the one? Uh, yeah. Another good question. Um, so my uh, sophomore year in college, um, my buddy Jeff Terrell, um, he, he was a uh, yeah, he was one of my roommates, and he he had competed, and I saw pictures, and and he carried a good amount of body fat in the off season, and I just he was just a big farm boy, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I just couldn't believe, like, well, how do you, how do you go from – at that time, I wasn't very well-versed in, in diet and stuff. I just – my genetics kept me where I was at. And um, so he was prepping for a show, um, the one that, that I eventually did. And I went to it, and I thought I would, would never get on stage and wear that thing and flex. And I just – I thought it was ridiculous. But I respected the process. And uh, I went to it, and – I mean, right away, I just, I knew like, like this was this was made this was made for me, yeah. and uh, you know I was reaching the end of my college career at this time, and and I, I I still had that I missed competing, but the one thing about competing, like in football and baseball, I didn't like relying on other people, so mm-hmm. I thought this sport was perfect for me, like it, win lose, like it's all on me. I can't right. blame anybody but myself, and I love that that aspect of it. Take complete ownership of 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 all wins and failures, you know? And, uh, and, um, so yeah, so I did that same show the following year. He helped me through prep through it. Um, mm-hmm. we were in the same weight class. He got, I think he got seventh and I, I got first. Nice. <laughs> and at that point I just, it was just kind of another, uh, validation that, yeah, this, this is something I, I think I should pursue him. Seem to be pretty good at it. So now, I, I heard right after you won, someone started a thread, the mayor of bodybuilding on, on MD saying you did your own prep for the nationals. Is that true? Uh yeah. Well this one the last the last couple I did for uh two or three of my shows, um I think my first two national I'm I'm reading everywhere they're saying I did five nationals. I've only done four. <laughs> um I, I th- for two of them, um uh Aaron Garza, the owner of, of my pure line he he did them for me and uh it's just very smart guy and i learned a lot but it's just difficult uh i hate and i said i say this a million times i hate relying on people for anything Mm, so i took what i learned and uh you know did more research and then i i looked i follow lane Lane norton a lot i use a lot of his his methods Mm. and uh and i just apply it to to myself and um it, it's with my job and, and accounting for the um, unaccountables, I guess. It's just easier for me to do my own, my own prep and, yeah. uh, and it worked out. I mean, when would you even have time to be consulting with a coach if you're working? Yeah, no, exactly. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. So that would just have uh, unnecessary added stress. Wow. So. Well, I got to congratulate you because you hit, you know, everyone's trying to get the fullness and the condition perfect on that one day. And, I'm sure 90% of the people you were up there with had a coach and a lot of those people did not hit it. They would they'll tell you, well, I was watery or you should have seen me yesterday or I had no yeah. pop or you should see it the next day. They didn't, they didn't hit the mark, but you know, you did yeah. it you, good for you, man. And you saved yeah. a, saved a little money too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also saw uh, references to Hunter pictures with Hunter Labrada. How do you know Hunter? He, well, he lives in Houston and uh, when did I meet him? Um, one of the local gyms, I don't know if this was the first, this was the first time I met him, um, last year or the year before they had him come out, um, as kind of a, a guest, um, little, uh, appearance and, uh, it, it's, it was right down the road from Port of my city. So I, I headed over there and we've chatted on, on, uh, on mine before. He's a real friendly, responsive guy. And, uh, so, so yeah, we met up and and had a good conversation and at the time we were going to be in my head he was going to be winning the heavy the heavy super heavyweights and i was going to be winning the heavies and we were going to be thrown down for the overall right. and that's kind of how i envisioned it and and uh it's probably what would have happened um yeah. Yeah. With, if i didn't have that that little health issue i had last year yeah well, let's, so, but, let's talk a little bit about that like i said the other interview was very extensive about that so i'm not going to recap all that because okay. a lot of people probably already watched that but so you were first diagnosed with ulcerative colitis uh right. 11, 11 years ago back in 2008 is that uh, right two, 
2006, I was diagnosed. 2008, I had the surgery. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, so you you were dealing with it until the surgery. You were dealing with that for uh, years, two years. two years. Wow. Yeah. Because you know, I uh, he asked he asked about C diff. Do you know you know what C diff is, right? Yeah. yeah. So I I had that two winters ago. So I got a little tiny taste of what you went through. And oh my God, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. You're in the bathroom yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, literally, I yeah. couldn't leave my house for quite yeah. a while. It was it was just yeah. horrible. Um, yeah, were you able to work during that time? How were you able to do anything normally? Oh, it would got to the point to where uh, um, I would apply for for jobs, uh, you know, outside of college, so like career type jobs. I applied for air marshal and and uh, other jobs, federal, non federal. Hmm. Um, and when it got to the medical portion, the very extensive questions, and they would always certain things I would mark yes on because I wasn't going to lie. Right. Um, they would want more information about the condition. And, mm-hmm. and uh, as soon as they found out about it, it was, you know, I had to supply them with my, my doctor's paperwork, which was very extensive. And, um, and I got turned down. I think that's illegal now, but at the time <laughs> they could, uh, they could turn you away for uh, a, pre- a medical condition. Sure. And uh, so I knew I, I, you know, I had to do something. So surgery was really your only option. Do you know, I don't know if you follow medicine now to see, are there medications now that if, if this had happened to you now, you wouldn't have maybe had to have surgery? Doubtful, very dubious. Um, I, uh, they keep coming out with different things. And I, at the time I tried everything and it seems like everything I tried then are pretty common and standard ones that people take now. And of course they, you know, there's other things that, that are, they're trying now and yeah. with a million side effects, you know, nothing that you want to take long term anyway. Right. So ultimately the, the best cure um, would be having my rec- colon removed. And I was young, healthy outside of that. So I thought, you know, this is the best time to just get it out of the way. So, so. what's what, you know, I know you had you had it removed. You had a bag for a little while and then it, they they reconnected it, right? Re- Which reconnected is... the small intestine to the rectum, and now okay. I go normal. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a moron. I'm, this is how stupid I am. Is the small intestine the last part on the way out? No, that's, it, the, that's the the large? large intestine is the colon. That's the okay. same thing. Yeah. So the, okay. I had okay. that removed, and yeah. Okay, so how does know. how does this affect like your diet? Are there do you have to eat a very restricted type of diet, or do you eat not just like any other? Not very. Um, certain things um, give me a little more issues than others. I have to stay away from um, like skins, and I love corn and cream corn. I can't I can't have things with skins on them. Um, dairy, I'm like all of a sudden lactose intolerant, so I can't. Uh, I, I can have pizza occasionally. That doesn't bother me too much. Um, ice cream, thank goodness, is is okay. But man, milk um, that'll that tears me up. Um, so just little things, but the things that I need um, to do what I do, it's it's not much of a interference. Oh, right on. I just have to go to the bathroom a lot. So, but do you eat? Are you do you have to eat more often, or you eat? It's the same meal schedule and everything as a regular person. Same same body. meal schedule. It's just. Uh, Usually, I have to make sure that um, there's a bath. Well, after I eat, I most usually have to go right after. So, so do you digest faster? Well, I guess the stomach uh, is where digestion happens anyway. But yeah, no, I, I don't. The digestion part, I don't think happens faster. It's just I now have eight feet less of intestines that, so it just kind of it just does travel through a little faster. Um, so yeah. so okay, let's let's back up to a year ago. The Nationals 2018, you yeah. were only a couple weeks. How, how far out were you when uh, you went, when all this it stuff happened? happened? Uh, it happened Sunday, and the show was two weekends after that. So it was Good. just like a day under two weeks. Wow. So you were almost fully prepped, almost fully I ready mean, for that I show. I no, I, I mean, I was. Aside from the, the, all I needed was the coat. Like, I was, I was ready to go. I just had to cruise right in. And, uh, yeah, I was feeling great. Everything was just perfect. And I got, uh, yeah, I, I got, I felt bloated. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I had to rush to the hospital, uh, that Sunday night. Um, I was hoping that I was just going to be able to take like an enema or something to just, I knew I was blocked up and I just, just flush it out, you know? 
but right. the pain was just so, so I just wanted them to put me out and just take care of it. Sure. Um, long story short, it, uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't that easy and they ended up, it ended up rupturing. So I, and it was probably suspect that it was, I was walking around cause it was weird when I was walking around, I'd feel, I don't know if you, if a normal person can relate to this feeling, um, but maybe drinking a lot of fluids or where you feel kind of like almost the water moving around inside. Yeah, of you. sloshing. Yeah. Yes. And it was, it was like that it just kind of amplified. Um, and it was, it was weird. It was a weird feeling. So I'm, I'm most definitely sure that it, that was the point when it had ruptured and it was, yeah, it was just moving around outside of my leaking outside of my small intestine. And that's when I went in. Um, and he, they noticed that they're like, we, we have to operate right now. Yeah. Cause I mean, that would, you'd go septic. You, that would kill you pretty yeah. quickly if, right. Cause yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, my, my late mother, yeah. that was like, that was like the last straw. I think that's how she finally went was that happened in the yeah, hospital. A lot of people end. do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not that's uncommon. Terrible. So, uh, I saw probably one of the greatest before and after pictures ever yeah. on, on Instagram that you posted was right yeah, after people don't believe it. I mean, I believe it, but it's it's crazy because when yeah. when was that picture taken where you have the you still have the bandages on your stomach and everything? That was after my final discharge, um, and after I had gone to the gym a little bit. I could I wish I took pictures before I went to the gym, mm. but I couldn't even I didn't even like looking in the mirror. But I finally at that point after a couple weeks of uh, you know putting a little bit of weight on, so it was sometime in December. So it wasn't it hasn't even been a full year since that mm. picture was taken. So you were competing, so you were going to be about 225 on stage for nationals, so that's probably about the weight you went into so, surgery at? Well, I went in, actually, well, I was holding a little more water. I, I, I remember going in at uh, the hospital at 233. Okay. Um, so How low did you get at the lowest before you started putting your muscle back on? 160-something. Wow. And that was yeah. uh, fall, like around this time of year? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So you did all that in less than a year. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. you put you had to put on all your muscle all over again. And then, and, and then dial condition. it in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's do, you, do you normally carry a, a, a lot of body fat or are you naturally a no. leaner guy? No. No. Um, my abs are always visible. My quads are always, uh, you can still always see all the lines. Uh, I always I stay in, and I don't do much cardio, if any. Sometimes I go on spurts where I, I hit it for a little while. But the food that I eat during my prep is the same. I love, I just love to eat. And I, I've been eating the same like six meals with some modifications for like a decade now. And, uh, it's no chore. I, I love, I love what I eat. I love the, so I eat the same foods. It's just in larger portions. Yeah. So it's easy for me to, to stay on, on track. Now, after like a show, do you, do you allow yourself pizza, ice cream, some stuff like that? I do. Um, but I don't go overboard because, because I'm more conscious of the body and, and um, things that can happen. So uh, I don't, I don't overdo it, but I, I treat myself. So, yeah. you know, your story quote unquote, it's only really been out for a little while. People are only realizing everything that all the obstacles you've got, you went through on the way to that win. Are you already getting a ton of messages from people thanking you yeah. for the inspiration and stuff? Yes. And it's, and I feel terrible because it's hard to, like I said, as much as I work and, and I try to keep up with it. Um, I try to, resp and I, I don't, I don't mean to blow anybody off. So eventually I'm going to try to try to get through to them, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting a ton of messages, L lots of good feedback, a lot of, a lot of great supporters out there. Yeah. Cause you, you basically defeat every stupid excuse any of us could have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I work too much. Oh, this guy works 80 hours a week. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my knee hurts sometimes. Oh yeah. He had his colon removed and then, you know, it's, it's just, it yeah. puts everything in perspective. If you can do all, if you mm -hmm. went through all that and still can look this good and you know that this is the, this is still the toughest, as far as I'm concerned, the toughest amateur show in the world is the NPC mm -hmm. nationals. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it, it's a level above pretty much everything else as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's all. But, um, you know, you've, you've, you've had very little time to think about this, but I, well, I'm not going to ask you about your next show because you, you, you just won. You just turned oh, pro. Thank you. Thank leave you. the guy alone. Yeah, leave the guy alone. <laughs> but when you look at your physique, when you look at the pictures from the Nationals and stuff, what do you, is there anything you really want to improve on before you make your pro debut? 
Absolutely. Um, improvements everywhere. Um, but there is one thing that, that is for sure. And I don't, um, you know, I, I have a, I have a, a job and I, I want to be a father one day. I like to be able to get in my car. And so as much as I respect and can appreciate uh, a lot of the pros that just become, you know, mass monsters, um, I don't want to become a freak. So I want to, I would want to keep my symmetry and aesthetic. So, though I wouldn't mind putting some, and I would need to put some size on, you know, in certain places. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't want to get out of control. I want to keep it. And if it's not big enough for them, so be it. You know, I still want to be able to be functional. I, I want to be able to put my own socks on. And <laughs> yeah. so, um, uh, some modest improvements, but always tweaking that, that, that symmetry and, and balance. Because uh, there's a lot of smaller guys with a, a beautiful structure that can that can battle with guys twice their size. So you know, I, I honestly think aesthetics. It's not. It's, you know, I think classic has had an impact on judging. I think it's it's the pool of talent that we have too. Judges judge what's in front of them, but right. we don't have the Marcus Rules and the Nassers and the Ronnies and the Jays. We don't. We don't have that anymore. There's really no. There's only a few true. guys like Rami, and you can really count them all on one hand. The guys of, true. that are anywhere near that size. It's it really yeah. is more about complete complete physiques, really yeah. nice shape, good condition. Yeah. You know, I think it's. Uh, I'm personally, I, I appreciate it all types of physiques because I've been I've been around forever. But yeah, you know, I'm glad it's swung that way. It's it's a it's a healthier look. Yeah, it seems, it's, seems to be coming back. Yeah, definitely is. So you know, yeah. I, I looked at all your stage shots, and I, I think you'd be very competitive right now as you are. Thank you know, you. I don't. I don't think you necessarily need to be any bigger, you know, okay. maybe yeah. there's a couple little body parts you want to sure. you want to bring up a bit. That's about it. But, you know, sure. yeah, you're, you're not far from where you need to be, which is, yeah. you're not one of those guys who needs to disappear for two years before he's ready for the pro stage. Yeah. As, as we've seen many, many times with USA and nationals winner. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about this company, pure line. How long have you been with them? Oh um, man. Um, so they picked me up. Uh, I think it was 2004 either 14 or 15 uh, um and uh yeah they've been terrific they've been good to me um good 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 quality products and uh um i don't uh you know with my job they've been great especially because with my job and stuff i don't like post in you know that's why a lot of people don't know my story they don't know a lot about me they feel like you know where did this guy come from he came out of nowhere so i don't put myself out there as much as a lot of the guys do and a lot of that's because of my job, and I do like um, to have some privacy in my life. Right. And uh, so they're good about me not uh, blowing up social media, you know, advertising stuff all the time. So that's been yeah. uh, refreshing. So, And I think a lot of times in law enforcement, they really don't, you know, your superiors really don't want you posting a ton of stuff on social media anyway. It's right. just for whatever exactly. reason. Yeah. So job's number one. So I got to make them happy. So. Yeah, it's because yeah. you, you've been a top top guy for a while now. It's it's really surprising. I should have known who you were. You were already fourth at the Nationals, third at the Nationals, fifth at the USA. I'm sure I missed a couple other top fives. No. Well, that was those are the only times I never won the overall, the National shows. So every time I did Nationals or USAs, I was, I've always been top five, yeah. Wow. And this is only, you know, My you've fourth. been doing – you've only done a couple of shows that weren't at that level because if, you, if you've only – this was your 10th show – that means at least half of your shows or more have been pro qualifiers. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, it's not a bad ratio. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. score. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Uh, let's let's give people your social media so we can get you some more followers anyway, even if you don't <laughs> post a whole lot. Just what I need. Okay. <laughs> it is M underscore Schmidt 12. M underscore Schmidt 12 on Instagram. Uh, I assume you have no time to make a YouTube channel right now. So. I have one, uh, oh. no time to really uh, add. I haven't added to it in a while, but uh, you need someone we'll to see. follow you around all the time, you know. That's what, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of these guys have either assistants or someone they hire just to basically follow them around yeah, all the damn yeah, time. They sure do. Yeah, you see it at the shows, the the entourage that they have, and I've never never had that. So yeah, you should um, see. Uh, okay. Best entourage is Wesley Visser, a class physique pro. There's like there's like six or eight guys that follow him around. I don't even know why. You got Jeez, one with a microphone, one with a camera, one taking notes. Yeah, uh, he's, I couldn't do it. No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, that's his job. You know, this is 
Yeah. Kind of like Ronnie Coleman said, bodybuilding was a hobby. For now, I guess this is kind of a hobby for you, even though you're you're now a pro at it because yeah. you're not about to quit your day job, right? No, certainly not. I absolutely love what I do. No, no, this this is always going to be a hobby. Yeah. Well, Matt, uh, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, wishing you the very best. Your story is very inspirational. I, I love stories where people can can hear it and go, okay, well, whatever whatever my problem was or my excuse was, you know, now I realize how how ridiculous I'm being. So that's that's you're a good you're, you're helping a, a lot of people have a good wake up call with their own with their own situations. Hope so thank Absolutely. you. Yeah, I hope so. That's important because I think yeah. a lot of us fall fall into that trap of wallowing in self pity and making excuses. So sure, yeah, need a little kick. You've yep. given us given us a very good one. Put this guy. Down. I'm happy to be good. <laughs> so Matt, congratulations on the NPC Nationals overall win. Wishing you the very Thank best you. of luck with everything. And I guess we'll uh, hopefully talk to you in a few months if you're going to be getting ready for a pro show or something. We'll Sounds see. Good. Yeah, cool. appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Ron Line Report. Please subscribe. Hit the little bell thing. And thank you for watching.